Rajan Kumar, uh, you know, considering the fact that there's a lot of pressure from on Vladimir Putin back home as well, you know, there are women who've been telling him to stop the war because male uh, male members of families are being forced into fighting for Russia. Uh, in such a situation, uh, you know, is Russia in such a bad condition where it is forcing people uh, to fight on its part? Uh, thank you for having me here, uh, Shreya. Uh, as far as uh, Russia's uh, you know, uh, concerns, you know, Russia is seriously concerned about the number of people at this moment. Let me tell you, uh, it began at almost a year back when Putin came with certain incentives for the people who might be joining uh, Russian army. And as, uh, uh, as uh, Ambassador Tegunath rightly pointed out, that it's not only Indians, but the large number of people have been recruited from uh, Central Asian countries in particular, uh, but also from Nepal, Bangladesh, Pakistan, etc. And Russia needs army. Conscription, as you said, that, you know, uh, last year or in, in fact, uh, immediately after the war started, a conscription law was passed in Russia. And after that, two important decisions were taken to recruit more people. One was the offer of citizenship. Uh, second one, uh, the salary was given very, very high, uh, four times the average salary in Russia. So because of that, a lot of people from other nationalities, uh, especially from Central Asia, uh, they joined uh, you know, uh, to fight with Russia against Ukraine. Uh, in the process, what has happened that uh, some of the agents and uh, some of the groups, they started recruiting people who were not actually meant to go and fight the war. And uh, that has that has been a number of cases, you know, when Nepalese citizen was recruited when actually he was planning to go somewhere else, and also uh, they were not given proper information. Uh, for instance, in our case that we are referring to today, uh, eight uh, uh, around twenty. Some of the reports say that there are about one hundred uh, Indian citizens fighting uh, in Russia against Ukraine. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, there are reports that these people might have been some kind of uh, offered some temptation. Uh, uh, they went on uh, this uh, tourist visa, which is just for three months. And uh, in the latest video, it says that they were taken to uh, Belarus. Uh, it needs to be investigated that who is at the fault, whether, you know, these people couldn't understand where they're going, mm. uh, what they kind of, you know, are duped by the agent, uh, or what they're forced by some Russian authorities. And uh, I'm very positive in the sense that we have very uh, good relationship with Russia even today. And uh, with uh, and so there were some reports uh, uh, last week, I guess, that some of the uh, some of the people who were recruited earlier, they were discharged also by the Russian officers. Uh, so I'm very positive that yeah. gradually some negotiation will take place and these people, at least the young Indians who are there. Yeah, of uh, course, sir, the government also is maintaining that it is in touch with Russian authorities and the government regarding this matter. But Ambassador Trigunayat, what are India's options now? We already have the unfortunate news of one death of an Indian national there. A uh, few of uh, them are stuck there. And uh, the Ministry of External Affairs has said that they're in touch uh, and they have been bringing up this issue again and again with the Russian authorities. But what are the diplomatic uh, options we have in front of us to get them back, really? Well, sir, one thing I would like to tell you is that as far as providing uh, assistance, bringing back Indians is concerned, I think there's no other parallel in the world to what Indian government does. Uh, it goes to any extent to bring people out from the harm's way. And I have no doubt that this time also this will happen. The fact remains is that this matter, since they are on the front lines, the matter would be taken up with, through the foreign ministry and directly through Kremlin and others to get this. But now this is also getting a lot of media attention. Now they we would not probably know in the public domain that what was what really transpired in those good things. But the end result is there, that you have the unwilling people who don't want to fight and they have been forced into this as helpers and now made to go to front to fight or whatever. But I wonder that if in a short time they can become soldiers themselves, they can become a foreigner, not a soldier. So I don't think if they're going to be of great uh, benefit to any professional army going to fight there in three, four months time, you can't train them. But at the same time, what I think is that Indian government mm -hmm. will definitely try to oh, bring them out and I think sooner than later, of course, they are working to send back the body of this gentle mortal remains of this uh, gentleman yes. who unfortunately got killed in this. But the others also, I'm sure that they will be released uh, by the army there uh, if they have been recruited. But there are reports that they were also not recruited by the mm. army as it is by the Wagner group. So if that is a private uh, militia group mm. and uh, of course has a, a stamp of approval from the government or whatever, but at the same time, those people have very different kind of, um, you know, the working mechanisms. 
And therefore, I feel that um, the government yeah. will put pressure. And given our relations, as Professor Kumar said, I think that they will come okay. back. But the larger question is that how to prevent its recurrence in future. I have handled it throughout my yes. career, seeing these yes. kind of uh, malafide intentions of certain agents uh, going ahead and creating such problems, which become diplomatic issues between the two countries. Yeah, and so, and so what's the solution really? Uh, Dr. Rajan Kumar, uh, Ambassador Trigunayat, you can come in also as well. What's the solution then to prevent our youngsters from not getting trapped into, you know, uh, such such situations where it leads to, as you said, diplomatic tussles between countries? I think, I think you know, we have to be careful in, in, you know, in processing uh, the visas for the people uh, or when it, they enter the airport, etc. So especially the people who are not educated, they should be kind of, you know, asked very clear questions that why are they going, where are they going, especially in the conflict zones. Uh, there are not too many conflict zones, but there are a few cases like Myanmar uh, earlier, we have seen uh, such a case uh, in Russia today and also uh, Israel, uh, Hamas, etc. So we have to, you know, uh, be careful about sensitization, also about checking, uh, especially the agencies which are recruiting people for these countries for jobs, etc. So they have to clearly provide, you know, uh, kind of uh, they have there should be provided guideline that to who they can recruit and who they cannot. Uh, and uh, we need to, you know, we need to be careful about it because this also brings a very bad name to a country like India, and uh, and they are caught in such issues, and younger people are caught in uh, these kind of affairs. Uh, uh, earlier also, I heard that you no, know, and some of the people who were mm. duped uh, when uh, in Thailand and they went to Myanmar, they were caught in the tussle. So that kind of situation keep happening off and on, and yeah. uh, we have to be careful. That's what I can tell you. All right, uh, we'll leave it there. Ambassador Trigunayat and Dr. Kumar, thank you very much to both of you for joining us on Nation tonight and sharing your perspective on this rather concerning and crucial issue that India is facing. Thank you very much.